Hello, good morning, good afternoon, or indeed good evening, depending on when you are watching. I'm James Innes, the Jobs Guru, and today I shall be talking about photos on CVs. To have or not to have? That is the question. So I spotted uh, an interesting post on LinkedIn the other day. Uh, interesting in the sense that it mentioned yours truly. It was written by Emily Moffat, uh, internal talent consultant at Oscar, apparently the ninth best company to work for, on the Sunday Times Top 100 list of 2020. Pretty cool. Um, I'm reading it from this rather soggy piece of paper. It's not raining right now, but it has been raining, so and the table's soaked. But never mind, it's still, still legible. She thinks it's about to start raining again. Never mind, maybe I'm with this. So Emily said, photos on a CV. Thoughts. James Innes, author of the CV book, said that judging by appearances is human nature. We know we shouldn't, but we can't help it. So including a photo is going to create an immediate first impression on the recruiter that they won't be able to ignore. Photos on CVs can cause issues with discrimination. This is Emily speaking now. In some workplaces, HR professionals can immediately reject the CV if it contains a photo as, so as to avoid issues with bias and discrimination. I had a conversation with a friend who made the point that in an instant, employers can find a candidate's social media, or better yet, candidates are encouraged to attach their LinkedIn profile to their CV. So does a photo on the CV make a huge difference? What are your thoughts? That's not my thoughts, but she's an open question. Now, I'll put this very soggy piece of paper down. It won't blow away today. It's, uh, yeah. Um, this post resulted in really uh, quite a lot of thoughts from quite a lot of people. So here's my take on this. Whilst recruiters can, and probably will, search for candidates online and see what they look like, generally the CV will still be their first impression. So it's vital to avoid potential bias by unscrupulous employers that their first impression is based on your abilities rather than your looks. How someone physically looks, though, is just a starting point now. How does your online reputation come across? What have you been liking, sharing, subscribing to? Who can see that info and what does it say about you? Take the time to review all of your social media profiles. Start with LinkedIn, of course, making sure you have a professional photo, as more and more these days, not having an image on LinkedIn will hinder your prospects rather than help them. And of course, a little bit of Photoshop can help when it comes to that more important LinkedIn photo, which is certainly a service we offer at James Innes Group, for example. Work your way slowly through all of your profiles, then use various search engines to search for your name and even the email address you will use to apply with. You never know what will come up. And you can, of course, get a professional to do all of this for you. It's also a service my business offers. So I put this to Emily, and she came back at me with two follow-up questions. Two, two, again, rather interesting questions. Number one, I would be interested in hearing your experienced opinion on the presentation of CVs and whether you think adding color and graphics shows the candidate's personality, or is it distracting and unnecessary? And question two, what is your opinion on employers going through candidate social media? It seems to have caused a large amount of debate in the comments, she's referring to her post, on whether that is morally, uh, a morally correct thing uh, for employers to do. So I'd be keen to hear your opinion. So, colour and graphics. They may get recruiters to stop for a second, but if the information isn't accessible, it just won't get shortlisted, no matter how wow the design may be. And regarding checking social media, I believe it's part and parcel of the recruitment process these days. So it's, it's good practice to be vigilant and proactive about your online presence to protect yourself from prying eyes. Uh, this can make you a more desirable, uh, regularly discovered candidate, i.e. Um, posting actively on LinkedIn. So those are advantages to it as well, you know, maintaining a blog about your experience, skills and industry. Both help govern what shows up about you on page one of Google. So hit that YouTube thumbs up if you agree with my thoughts or thumbs down if you don't. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching today. Keep safe and be well, my friends. Goodbye.